Hello, in this video we're going to look at part two of the reading and use of English paper for the Cambridge Advanced exam. Part two is the open close. Here you have a short text similar to the one we saw in part one and for the eight gaps you have to supply a single word. Now it's important to remember a few things here. First of all, only one word will go in the gap. So if you think that it's something like don't or doesn't or hasn't, then that unfortunately is a mistake because these contracted forms are actually two words, do not, does not, has not. Only one word will go in the gap. Also, uh, if the word you think of is particularly long, I'm afraid it's probably wrong. The words that we're looking for here are going to be linking words, but, and, although, however. They might be parts of phrasal verbs, either the verb part, put, uh, set, for example, or the preposition, down, up, on. They could be little words like it, this, or it could be um, general words that um, we use when we make comparisons, for example, like more or less, least, most, things like that. The general rule then is that if it's long, it's wrong. So what can you do to navigate this text? Again, Cambridge recommend that you read the text before you begin, but you probably won't have time and I don't think it's really necessary. The most important things to do though are to concentrate on how the clauses in each sentence are put together. If you have, for example, a sentence with two clauses and the first one has a positive meaning and the second one has a negative meaning, there needs to be a linking word to show that contradiction. If the linking word isn't there, but there is a gap, then you have your answer. You just then have to choose the linking word that fits the space grammatically. Look at the meaning of the sentence. Do we want that positive meaning? Are we going negative? Are we looking at the result or the consequence of an action? Understanding how the sentences fit together is a very important part of this open-closed task. Remember, this is the reading and use of English paper. And although this looks like a grammar exercise, there are a lot of reading skills that are being tested as well. So when you think of a word to fit the gap, put it in, but then read the sentence to yourself again and see if it sounds right. Sometimes it's only when you read the sentence and you reach words later in the sentence that you realize that there's a connection between the gap and this word over here. And sometimes it helps just to simplify the sentence. If you have a long noun phrase or a noun with many adjectives, it can help to take out some of these adjectives, at least just for a moment, to see if there are any other important words that affect what goes in the gap. So sometimes it helps to take the sentence or the clause and if it presents some information, turn it into a question. If you're told about a place but you don't know why, ask where is this place and perhaps where is actually the word that you need to fill the gap. Look at collocations as well. Think about the words around the gap. Which words would fit those? Make a pattern. Okay, so follow the link in the description to this video download the PDF if you haven't already. We're looking at page 21 of the document itself and this is uh, the task called Managing Change. Take a couple of minutes to go through, remember the tips we've just discussed and then come back to this video when you're ready and we'll look at the answers together. Okay, so you've had a chance to do the task Let's see how you fared. For number nine, the word we're missing is such. Now this is a classic kind of um, Cambridge trick of having a structure in the sentence but hidden by a lot of information. Because after the gap we have rapid change, so we have a difficult adjective and then a noun. 
And then we have this long time expression in the early years of the 21st century. And all of this will distract you. You'll forget perhaps what you're looking for and you'll think, ah, change is a noun, so it must be the. But actually, after this noun phrase and the time expression, we see that life. So we have such plus adjective plus noun that. This is a very common structure. It only looks difficult because Cambridge have hidden the meaning so well. And then number 10, we want the word at. This completes the time expression at times. For number 11, we want the word put. This completes the phrasal verb to put forward. We put forward suggestions. For number 12, the word we want is than. Here we have the expression rather than something. It's the same as instead of. And then number 13, we have another phrasal verb. Here we have two options. We can complete the phrasal verb that starts with faced, either with with or by. So there are two options there. When you have two options, do remember only to write one on the answer sheet. Then skipping ahead to the last paragraph, we find number 14. And we want a word that, me, that would introduce an example here. We need to think of the example. The next part of the expression tells us what that is. So number 14, the word we want is like. Then 15, we want the word least, at least once a week. So this is to complete the expression. And then in 16, if we look at the two clauses in this sentence, the first one has the simplicity of these ideas, which in a manner of speaking is a negative concept. And then that's contradicted in the next part by they nevertheless help people prepare mentally to manage major change if necessary. So we have this change. And where we have a change in meaning between the clauses, we need a linking word. In this case, the linking we, word we want for number 16 is despite. And that's it. When you really strip away the language, it doesn't seem quite as intimidating. There's always a good reason why each of these words is chosen. The best way to prepare for this part of the test, as with the first part and everything that follows really, is just to do a lot of practice. Because the more you practice, the better you get at doing these tests. You start to see behind the thinking a little bit. You start to understand what it is that Cambridge is really looking for. And with this one, we're looking for those little words, the, the glue that holds sentences together in English. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to look at part three, which is word formation.